So I went ahead and installed rear flaps on this. So you can really slow down a lot by putting out the uh, elevator flaps. Now it's a new feature, we'll be testing that probably the first flight. See what you guys think of that idea. Of course I'm kidding. I want to start tackling the uh, tail fairings. I've got this one all drilled and clecoed in place. And then the other side I've actually completed already. And what this uh, is actually recommended to do, or what they have you normally do on this, is you take these little um, nut plate clips and they slide them up over this and then you screw the fairing to that. I went ahead and did actual nut plates, and the reason I did that is because the thickness of this clip pushes the uh, aluminum up off the surface of the tail, the thickness of that clip. So it ends up not sitting flush. So I went ahead and did the uh, a real nut plate with flush rivets, and that way the aluminum will sit down tight against it. What I'll probably do is put a little piece, a small piece of clear tape all the way around the edge where that sits, just to uh, protect the paint a little bit. But um, this side's done, and get to work on this side. So it's all drilled, ready to put all the nut plates in on this side. Very time consuming with the nut plates. And then the other thing you'll notice is the trim line for the paint is a little bit above, and I don't, I don't really want to paint um, this two-tone. So I'm gonna mark that, and I'm gonna actually trim the aluminum up to that paint, Oop, up to the paint line. Um, I've already marked the other one, you can see with the uh, masking tape. On this side, needed very little correction at all, so I was probably to grind that off. So, anyway, so working on that tail fairing. Alright, here we go. Finished tail fairing. Now all the screws are screwed in, they're just in place to make sure they fit. There's a one screw where the joint is where I have to cut out the fiberglass backing uh, so that that screw can go in. Otherwise, it's done. Alright, so I put the tail on, adjusted the uh, trim so that the throw is within the confines of the slot for the fairing. Um, I've got a little area where it just is a little tight. And I'll make a little bit of adjustment to that opening right at the back of this side only. 
Uh, so the elevator also clears just fine. So the next thing I'm gonna do is mark out which part of this shows and then get that painted up. I'll probably match that with the silver and uh, <clears throat> go along with, uh, I'm gonna paint the cowling still. So, but anyway, the point of that is the tail is done. It is mounted up. The only thing I haven't mounted yet is the control linkage to the elevator, which I'll do tomorrow morning. I just wanted to, kind of anxious to get the cow pieces on and make sure that the clearances with the cutouts were proper. Uh, there is a little adjustment on this side that I'm gonna do uh, right in here, and that's just full up uh, trim and full up elevator. You can see it just touches the fairing a little bit right there. So I'm gonna trim that out a little bit. Other than that, it is all good. I'll show you real quick. The trim switch is hooked up right here. Full up right now, so I'll go back to middle. And what I'm doing next, the reason I started in on this uh, also is to mount up the trim position sensor, which will be done tomorrow. So tomorrow I got the trim position mount up the uh, linkage for the elevator i'll trim up these cowling pieces that where they need just a little bit of widening a little bit and that's pretty good for the tail all right good morning gang i'm back at it <clears throat> so i'm trying to get a picture in here just installed the trim position sensor so fold up trim or the leading edge of the elevator or the horizontal down <clears throat> you want it to just touch this spade right here then in the full up position <clears throat> it needs to be fully compressed or I'm sorry full down position so the full down position okay and then it has it so that this button's fully compressed. You can see if I just lift this down, it just starts to move. So I've got that set for full range on the, I guess you could call that a potentiometer, I don't know. But uh, next I'll have to do the wiring on it. So I haven't set the uh, sensor, I haven't glued it in place, it's just set in with that screw right now. And I may not glue it in place. I don't know that that's necessary, if it has that bolt in there. So anyway, a trim position sensor that runs up to the uh, GRT and it will show an indication once I program it for that. Hopefully that all works out. So we'll get that wired up here and uh, back to work. All right, I wanna go over real quick what I'm doing. We got these butt ribs pretty firmly mounted up top. So the next thing I needed to figure out was why my controls were a little um, binding uh, in the elevator plane. So what I found is that the push-pull tube is actually hitting the wood rib in the tail, as you can see in this video. And so what was recommended by Kitbox is going ahead and cutting that wood rib out back to the, the lightning hole that's just behind it. So that'll be done so it won't limit the throw of the elevator push-pull tube. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I went to, uh, when I mounted up the elevator, the throw was wrong. I kind of eyeballed it. I knew I was gonna have to adjust it later, but it's actually way off. I wanted to make sure that the rigging is proper. So I need to set the control stick to an 80 degree position in reference to the floor. And then make sure all my control linkages have a half inch between the rod and the rod end, which they did not. So just setting the angle to 80 degrees, the uh, elevator was nowhere near the right position. So there's six points on these. You have your front bell crank and then your aft bell crank on the Model 7. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six different spots where you have to disconnect it. Except you can just disconnect the front end and you can unthread the, the one that's still in the bell crank by just screwing the whole rod out and then adjusting the end one. So the bell crank in the middle, which is where the servo mounts, is right about here. 
I've got all of them adjusted up to that point, and now I'm just adjusting the last one. So I just undid it here. So I got to crawl back in there and lengthen out that tube to get myself a half inch on the between the rod and the rod end here, and then again on the one where it attaches to the elevator. Then we'll reset the elevator to it's hanging up on that to a neutral position again, and then I'll measure the angle of the stick to 80 degrees in reference to the floor, and then make sure that it's the right linkage, right length. If it's not, then we start making the adjustments from there because we have a half inch to work with to make it shorter or longer. I think it'll be a little bit long just because I haven't done the last one and I checked it and it was almost there before I adjusted the, the aft one. So if I do the aft one a full half inch on either end, it's gonna be just a little bit too long. So I can pick, pick where I wanna shorten it up to get it to be right. So I got that one more to lengthen out and then I'll set it all up again and check the elevator and I'll show you guys how that all ends up. Now once I do that, then we're gonna set these control stops, which you change the length of these screws right here. You can see this one's already resting on that one. We'll get that 80 degrees about like that and then we'll set the length of that screw to match the throw of 39 degrees up plus or minus one and 20 degrees down plus or minus one. So that's what we're aiming for with that. Um, that is also why you set it at an 80 degree position for neutral because you'll have more aft than forward. And uh, so we'll get that set with the stops. And then the, at least the pitch linkage will be all set. Um, I'm not gonna do the roll yet because I don't have the flaperons and everything mounted up, but this will get that part done. And uh, then I can get that servo finished. And then I can button up basically from the baggage back will be done. All right, sorry about the fan noise. So I set them all to a half inch. Put this uh, apparatus on the tail to keep it flat. Something I suggest doing. Got it all set and it was too far forward, which means they're all too long. So I adjusted this one because it's the easiest one to get to. And adjusted it out to get me really close. So because you have to measure to the floor using that block. So that's set to 80 degrees and you're trying to get it uh, parallel with this block right here. So we're set at 80 degrees in reference to the floor. The sticks are at the 80 degree mark and the elevator is straight. So that is set properly for the linkage length. So now I can go ahead and put all the hardware back on and torque it down. And then the next thing I'll do is check the servo throw and see if I need to adjust that. All right, Cody's helping me set the control throw. So right now we're full down at 20 degrees. Go ahead and give me full up. 20 degrees, we're gonna go full up. So about 20 down and 39 up. And right at 38, 8, 39. Okay, and then we'll come to the neutral point. And that's right about zero, right there. So basically what we're doing is we're setting this at a straight point, putting our digital meter on there 20 degrees down and 39 degrees up, plus or minus one. And the way we're setting that, is by adjusting these stops right here. You just move that Allen set screw in or out until it hits the stop and get you those measurements. So we're all set, high five, and on to the next. All right, trying to uh, stick with the task a day theme here. Magnetometers mounted, wired up. I'll show you how I did this. Again, I have two sets of wings for this plane. So I'm trying to make it so everything unplugs at this end so that we can pull the wings off just by disconnecting the fuel lines and unplugging. So I have a Douch 3 uh, conductor connector here. It is labeled and you should be able to unplug this 
right here at the wing tip and the magnetometer will go with the wing. You can also, of course, unplug it at the uh, nine pin connector and take it off and put it on the other wing. Uh, so far what I've done, um, it's hardwired right now. I am gonna put another uh, couple of these Dausch connectors in line with these wires to one goes to the strobe position light and the other one goes to the landing light. Those will have the Deutsch connectors as well so I can unplug it, take the wing off. Uh, you can see over here, yeah, you can see it in a second here. So you got your two wing lights and then the tail light which is mounted now and being uh, it's glued and drying. Switch off the strobe, turn on the nav, so you can see the nav. They're awesome, brilliant, bright. I mean, you're going to see this airplane coming from a long ways away. So green on the right side, red on the left, and then you got the white on the rear facing on both of them, and then white on the tail. Super bright, really cool lights. Hopefully the uh, camera frame rate caught the strobe there. Um, and now what I'm working on is the landing light. So the trick with these is they talk from left to right side. So um, I don't know if this will make a lot of sense, but here's a wiring schematic for doing two landing lights. You've got a wire that runs from the green on one side over to the blue on the other. That allows them to talk to each other. So when you go to the wigwag feature, so there's going to be two power switches to the lights. One will turn on the lights. Boom, both of them will come on. The other one you'll turn it on and then they'll alternate back and forth with the wigwag feature and that's why you need that wire that connects between the two of them. So um, basically I brought wires from both sides over and then they all connect here at this junction and then these are the plugs that are going to plug into the switch providing power and then here's the common ground that's going to go over to the ground block. I think it's going to be a cool feature so basically the way that will work is uh, I'll have my landing light switch here and then my wigwag switch here. And by doing that, it uh, really gives you good recognition. Uh, those lights will be positioned out at the wingtip and they'll flash left to right along with the uh, strobe. So you'll see this thing coming from pretty far away. I'm waiting on some additional um, connectors that come with the aero LEDs through Kitfox, which are these. Um, Aero LED is going to send me a couple more of those, which was really nice of them to, to do that. I explained that I want to be able to swap wings out, and uh, they just sent me some more of those. No charge. It was really cool. So, anyway, that's where I'm at with the lighting system and the wiring. All right, real quick, I want to show a feature that you can wire into the AEM engine monitor. So I put a wire to dim it on the nav light button. So basically if I'm going to have the nav lights on it's going to be dark. So I'm going to turn the nav lights on and the screen goes down to a dim mode. Um, just a way of dimming out that screen. It's really bright otherwise you turn the nav lights off comes back up bright. So nav lights on, nav lights off. Pretty cool. Alright I'm going to wrap this one up here and next time we'll get into the wingtip installation. Uh, here's a little clip flying over the mountains on my way back into McCall uh, on the trip out to Idaho this year. Just thought it was a good scenic shot to end the video with, so we'll catch you guys on the next one.